What's wrong with the kids these days? Huh? What's wrong with the kids these days? <laughs> What's wrong with the kids these days? Nothing. The kids are showing us how screwed up the adults are who run the world, right? A Problem in the World, 2019. It's only one page. A child growing up in the world today is told, work hard and you will succeed and be happy. Although it doesn't specify, this statement leads all to a conclusion, eventually, that for one to succeed, another must fail. The second thing is what does it mean by succeed? Generally, it is assumed that this is a big house and a fancy car and a good marriage prospects, all coming from getting a good job. You've got to impress your superiors, show them you will do what they did to get on in life. The superiors like this because it validates what they did with their life. Another problem with the initial statement is that it isn't true. Success in the rat race world does not necessarily bring happiness. <clears throat> now there are three points there that I'm going to go over again in a minute. Sounds like part one. to say, oh yeah, bloody kids need a good bloody idea and that's what they need, sort them out. You know, and because, you know, that would work momentarily. You know, if you had a real foul-mouthed youth who was not being respectful to anyone, someone coming up and giving them a hiding is obviously going <laughs> to have an effect. But the long-term effect that it's going to have <coughs> is much, much worse. I mean, we break horses in. You take a wild horse, and the conventional method is to bound it. Bound it up and tie it up and restrain it and, you know, and then give it another go. Take it out for a ride, see if it follows orders, and... I mean, I know it is done, it's done better these days. And school, obviously school, it used to be the cane. You get the cane, right? Child's not behaving, six of the best, pain, right? You know, if you keep not behaving, you get another six of the best. And as we basically found out from history, you know, what happens is they just get resilient to it. And, you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't hurt them so much anymore. So obviously they, they up the, uh, the amount of canings. And obviously if you've had one the day before and then you're getting one the next day, yeah, you know, then it is going to hurt because you're already sore. But it didn't work. Well, I, I mean, 
I guess people will argue that it did. Because I guess these particular people who got the caning a lot would leave school at 14 and go and work, you know, and you need that labour force. You know, you need you needed that labour force back in the past anyway, to make stuff. And what made the country prosperous. But you they get resilient to the pain and they just hate you for it. You know? I mean Kids grow up hating their parents if they beat them. They grow up hating the uh, authorities if they were beaten by them. Hate. Hate begets hate. So, if you've got half a brain, you know, and I'd love my child to understand this if I just said to him, look, love begets love. So be loving, because then more love's going to come back on you. But you know, he's still, he's still a kid. He's still a kid. He hasn't, he hasn't seen enough, experienced enough to evaluate everything. And I mean, this is what he's doing. He's learning. He's learning because, you know, he does put out. He goes to secondary school, and it's you know a thousand kids there. He's now he's come from primary school being the top to secondary school being the bottom, the youngest, the littlest. He's scared. I remember school, secondary school, I was scared. So as you put on a big bravado, big act, you know, and you know, and if you're able to follow it up, you probably follow it up. Um, You know, and then it's and then it becomes a bit. It can become a bit fun, you know. <coughs> the adrenaline, the adrenaline gets you going. You firing on all cylinders. You're getting praise from both the girls and other boys. Kind of respect. So it's natural that you would continue doing that as much as much as you could, in a sense. And hopefully for my son, I think it's wearing off. I'm hoping it's wearing off. So the, the school system these days is pretty much exactly the same, but it's just psychological stuff instead of physical. But the kids are showing us there's something, and like, I'm not just making this video because of a general talk about um, kids. You know, I think we've got a major crisis. I think there's, I think, you know, there is a major crisis, and that, you know, there is. It's the world, and the kids are reflecting it because they're still closer to the beginning of their lives and at the beginning of our lives or most people can't remember but right at the very very beginning or where were we just before the beginning of our lives <laughs> right we were with God it's not our first life and um, so the kids are still more connected so they if if you see they're probably a more affected by the by the errors that humanity is making and yeah I think we you know we're coming to this point where the those established leaders whoever they've been for the last 50 years of the last generation their intentions might have been good in the sense that their best idea of how to get along in the world was let's dictate from the top and then we have all the best people in the world um, working things out, health and everything, and dictating from the top. And everyone at the bottom just, you know, do what you're told, basically. 
we know best, you know, just do what we tell you to do and everything will be fine. And that's completely and utterly failed. Completely and utterly failed. I think they haven't succeeded to get there because if they ever did succeed to get to that point, um, it would be calamity. But in a sense, they have succeeded in a way that they've that you know they have spread throughout the whole world. They've, their their propaganda comes comes from on high wherever they get it from. Not God, I can tell you that. And they they set their agenda and everything else, and they've they've pretty much had control of the world, but not over all the people. Because as long as they're sending messages from on top, they feel like they are reaching everybody. They are reaching everybody. But not everybody is embracing what they're saying. And so then you've got grassroots. So they're coming from the top. And then you've got grassroots movement. People talking to each other, showing each other things. Social media is helping with that as well. You know, and, and so, you know, they can never stop us doing that. <clears throat> and we're really coming to, I think, I think we've reached the point where their way is faltering. It's, it's going to, it's already gone to chaos, practically. But from chaos comes order. Who was it doing a video the other day and um, they had, um, what was it, uh, this thing where <laughs> sort of, I don't know, grains of sand or whatever and it would go through this process and it would go through this different so it would go from chaos and then into like a snake shape. And then a bit of chaos again and then into a figure of eight or something. I think it was Jacob Israel. Yeah, it was. I wasn't watching, I was just listening. And so, you know, I mean, it's, we're in God's hands here. So everything's cool. But that, you know, that sort of belief in the... Um, you know, the, the stuff from on high, yes, we have systems and procedures for this sort of thing, you know, like, all you need to do is, uh, you know, look it up in the book, and this is the best procedure, and, you know, the problem, you know, I think they're, tr you know, they're trying to keep up, but the changes are too fast for it, but because for them to... Decide they you know they first of all need to decide on these new policies, and then they have to be agreed by people. You know, and it takes a long time before it can actually start to be implemented. So, you know, they're always going to be playing catch up. It's never going to be. They need to become more fluid, really. But that's the thing. Then, you know, they can't rely on individuals. Because then they got these safeguarding issues. Because every now and then there's going to be a twisted individual that gets through the through the system. They don't notice and um, jeopardize people in that way. So there's no trust in the system, and I think that's that's enough on its own to say that it's ultimately going to fail. You know, you've got, you've got to have, you've got to have trust. You've got to use trust. I, I run my business on trust. You know, every time I do a job for a customer, you know, I don't say you've got to pay me up front before I fix your problem. Um, I fix a problem, make sure they're satisfied, and then they're happy to pay me, you know, uh, They've trusted me to come into their house and, you know, stuff like that. So it's, we have that human, that human connection, that human trust. It's so much more valuable than, than all this sort of, you know, 
committees and stuff thinking of health and safety procedures that can eliminate any sort of problems and then everybody has to jump through the hoops and do all these things just because there's no trust so um, you know for people personally in your life make your word your bond and take other people's word as their bond and yeah you probably might get let down by the odd people but then you know the vast majority won't let you down most people are good and um, so the odd one that happens it happens that's a learn experience and <coughs> take it on the take it on the chin move on we can only control what we ourselves do ultimately that's that's the only thing we can control so might as well be focusing on that <clears throat> so in terms of what I think is a crisis at the moment the kids that are growing up now like my son's age 12 years old um, you know early on in his life he um, I took him out to the woods all the time and I say woods you know because obviously he was small so it didn't have to be a very big woods for it to be interesting for him you know and that was the the interest I was getting but everywhere I was going I was thinking you know, this wood's getting smaller and smaller. And you know when you're driving on a road and you see a line of trees and you think, oh, cool, nice woods over there, I'll go and check that out. And then, you know, that's all it is. A lot, you know, one or two trees thickness in a line and there's just a field on the other side. Oh, so much for woods, is it? You know, where the, where the woods you can get lost in, you know, they're few and far between and, and quite often they're if they are a decent size wood, um, they're being managed. The trees are being grown for a reason and they're going to get chopped down and used for whatever, you know. Um, so I've, I've looked for, you know, proper natural areas and there's hardly, there's basically none in this country. There's none. My garden's one of the most natural places I know. But it's only been left like that for about six, seven years. You need a, you know, you need a decent size area of land. Left for a hundred years before, before you could really say that, you know, that that's being managed by nature that's what nature does that's what nature provides and we have hardly any um, examples of it in the in the whole of the Britain um, and it's not necessarily that different in other countries either um, I always thought Norway was so natural I mean there's so many trees but um, Sort of found out through watching history programs and stuff that um, at one point Norway nearly ran out of trees. They nearly chopped down all their trees. So they did a massive replanting. And they just plant the same tree, don't they? So, you know, become can become very sort of monotonous, same sort of trees, you know. There probably would have been at least two or three had they let nature... Um, decide what trees should come back and having left land I know that if you just leave it trees sprout up I've got an oak tree sprouting about <clears throat> three feet from my front door perhaps not ideal but I'm gonna let it grow because nature knows best and uh, where that come from? I don't plant any acorns. It's not like little birds that are around here would be pooing out acorns. That acorn must have been pretty deep as well. 
could have been there for ages and ages, uh, just waiting for something. Uh, nature's not stupid. Nature, basically, every atom there is is God, including our physical bodies, because these are only on loan to us. Right? From the dust they're made and the dust they'll return. It's your, your only possession is you. You. Your soul, if you like. Anyway, digressing a bit. But then again, you know, these are the sorts of things that if they were widely known and we were teaching our children these sorts of things from a very young age, they wouldn't be so confused and, you know, um, whatever other words I could use to describe their state. I mean, so I know, you see, the thing is, what they've had that previous generations haven't had is this, um, the, the, the virtual realities of computer games so vast and realistic and realistic in terms of how they look so you know the way I brought my son up was basically is let him follow his interests in order to um, learn because you know I found in my own life obviously it's leaving school and stuff, but I've educated myself way more than what I learnt at school. At school there's, you know, there's a lot of information and you're going from lesson to lesson completely and basically you just got to learn it for long enough that you can regurgitate it and pass the exam. And then everybody's happy, you know. That's all you gotta do. They don't really give a shit if you understand it or not, as long as you can get them enough marks on the exam to be satisfactory or better, but yeah. So, in, if you're interested in learning, you want to understand it. If there's something you're interested in, you want to understand it. So with my son, I've taken that point, and so when he's been interested in something, I've helped him to find out the answers so that he understands it. So if he's become interested in something, I've thought, you know, okay, what am I going to do? Oh, you don't want to be interested in that. Oh, no, come on, be interested in this instead. You know, that, that, what sort of feeling does that give? You know, if I myself, when I was interested in learning about things, if someone had said, you know, I, I wanted to learn about, um, I don't know, Bermuda Triangle or something, and someone's going, what do you want to learn about that for? No, you want to learn about this. I think, you know, fuck you. I, I, I'm interested in that. That's what I want to learn about. So, you know, don't change what I want to learn about. No, you've, you've basically insulted my core being. So, use that. Why fight that, you know? Use that. Let them learn about it. There shouldn't be any fear in letting someone learn about something. Because, you know, if it's wrong, they will learn that it's wrong. And if it's good, they'll learn it's good. So, there shouldn't be any fear. If he wants to learn about I don't know, well, something negative, you know, let him learn about it. And then he'll soon see, oh yeah, this, this isn't a nice thing, I didn't... I don't like this, but he's learnt for himself, and he's experienced it enough to learn it. You can't, you know, experience is the best way of learning, right? So why not use it? And I'm there, I'm his father, I'm noticing differences in him and stuff like that, so if I think something's going a bit too far, it's getting a bit out of hand, then I'm I'm there, I can then make that decision. Shit, no, I better slow this down a bit because da 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 you know, that's down to me then, isn't it? I I'm the one who will have to live with the consequences if it if it's a complete cock up and, you know, I'm gonna be the one feeling bad or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, um, that's being a parent, I guess. So, let me just go over these points again. A child growing up in the world today is told, work hard and you will succeed and be happy. Although it doesn't specify, this statement leads all to conclusion, eventually, that for one to succeed, another must fail. And um, I think a lot of people might, on first hearing that, dispute that. It doesn't mean they fail. Everyone can succeed if they all work hard. It depends on your definition of succeed, doesn't it? I mean, in this society here, if everyone was working hard, they wouldn't all be getting paid the same, would they, for working hard? Some people would be getting paid 70 ti 75 times more than somebody else. Now, is the person getting paid 75 times less but working just as hard, still think they're succeeding. I don't think so. So, to work hard, and this is what they say at school, you know, work hard, work hard. You might as well be saying, work harder than the person next to you. Do better than the person next to you. We'll have a test, we'll have grades, percentages. Oh, who got top of the class? Who got 92%? Oh, well done, Clarence, you got 92%. Success. He worked the hardest. He got the best score. The boy who got the least score is sitting slumped on his chair. 54%. Oh, I'm giving shit anyway. Right, of course he's not going to give a shit now. Like, he's, you know, he might come up with some excuses and now oh, I didn't bother, did I? I didn't bother. So then, you know, in his mind, he's like, you know, I'm all right. I didn't fail because I didn't try. But you know, why didn't he try? Maybe he had no interest in the subject. Maybe he didn't like the teacher. Maybe he had things going on in his life that week that wasn't happy. But this whole thing, work hard, work hard to be better than the other person. So then what, you know, what would happen if everybody was working really hard and they all got 92%? People would turn around and go, ah, test's too easy. You have to make it harder. <laughs> well, they would, wouldn't they? And how many times has that happened? So how hard are the kids working these days? Because sometimes when my son gets home from school, he's, he's really knackered. I mean, and he says, like, I worked so bloody hard today. During his sats in year six, he had a huge rash all over his body. It was a stress rash. It went after the sats. How hard are they working the kids? Yeah, and the teachers. Because the teachers, you know, the teachers, are, you know, it's not kind of their fault, is it? I mean, they chose occupation of teacher. That's it. That was their only uh, issue here. But they, they're often, you know, very into the institution because they've basically been in an institution for their whole life. They went to school, went to university came out, and some of them weren't, might have worked other places, but a lot of them go straight into teaching, so they're never, <laughs> they never left school, if you like. So they, they are, they're going to defend the, the ways of the institution, but they're probably going to complain that. You know, how hard were the kids working 30 years ago compared to now? And how hard were the kids working 30 years before that? I don't know. Probably some things get easier and some things get harder. But that is what would happen. If everyone, 
if everyone was working hard and getting great results, they would make it harder. So it, it probably stands to reason that things have got harder. So then are we getting more brainier? Well, there's a question. Because it's not all about brains. Some of it's about being brainwashed. But, can we have a conclusion then that um, for one to succeed, another must fail? Success will only be looked upon as success if there's some sort of divide going on. Above average, average, below average, you know? So, the word success... Um, is used in many different ways. So I would see success uh, in talking about a particular task, you know. Did you succeed in this task or did you fail in this task? Yeah. It's nice to have successes, but then without failures we wouldn't be learning, would we? If you succeeded at everything you do, then you haven't actually learnt anything. Because you <laughs> You've coped with everything. Confusing. The second thing is, what does it mean by succeed? Oh, I was already talking about this. Generally, it is assumed that this is a big house and a fancy car and a good marriage prospects, all coming from getting a good job. You've got to impress your superiors, show them you will do what they did to get on in life. The superiors like this because it validates what they did with their life. Yeah, so, okay, so about the, you know, good job and good car and everything, you know, that's, you know, and could everybody have that? Well, potentially, but then it wouldn't be considered a big house, would it? It would just be a house. Just, everybody would get used to it. You know, everybody had an eight-bedroom mansion. Everybody would get used to it. But they wouldn't like it because there wouldn't be anyone to clean. I mean, if the clean if the cleaner is also gonna have an eight bedroom mansion. Do you know what I mean? It's just not never gonna work, is it? I mean why why do we want more than we need anyway? We just But um but this this point, you've got to impress your superiors to get on, huh? You do. You I mean, how does it work with teachers so much? You know, you be, you be a teacher's pet. You go along with what the teacher says. They're going to like you. And I suppose that's the beginning of arse licking, isn't it? But, let, but let's say, you know, in a job, you know, I've... I probably, you know had a few opportunities, probably one of the first ones, I was working in quite a posh clothes shop, part time, and I was about 17 or something, and um, the guy said to me, you know, do you want to come wash my car? <laughs> yeah, need some money, like, you know, he's being sort of like, you know, like, take you on sort of thing, and, but you know, like, I was just disgusted. <laughs> Wash your car. I'm gonna wash your bloody car. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> at that time, like well, you know, ambitions. And, you know, wash. I've done car washing for cash, but I wasn't gonna wash this guy's car like him, like him his bitch or something. But so, but if I had it done, if I'd gone, yeah, you know, if I'd known what I'd known now, like in a sense, and I'd just gone along with it, I go, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll wash your car. And, you know, like, like get me into the business and start doing more interesting things and stuff like that. You know, could have been a decent little career there. Like, career. You know, job, money, like the things that come with that, you know. And that's all you've got to think about. 
until you retire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is a good point, you know, because, you know, what happens to people when they retire? Uh, if they just spent their whole life really into their job? Yeah, well, there's only a big, big hole there, isn't there? But, exactly, because, you see, the boss man, who's 50, right? He's lived his life like that. You know, he d he said yes. I'll wash your car. I'll wash your car. Yeah, get get me this, right? And he's now fifty, and he's the boss man, and this is how he's lived his life. And he's sitting there, you know, he's got his big, he's got his nice big car, his big house, his wife, maybe a mistress. I don't know, you know, whatever he's into, wherever he gets his kicks, and you know, he's interviewing some twenty-one-year-old and. You know, he's like, you know, well, if you come and work at this firm and work hard, you know, put the hours in, really work hard, you know, eventually you could be, uh, you know, in my position here, you know, you know, 21, so yeah, I really want to, I, re I really want to work hard. I, really, I want to be like you, man. I want to be like you, man, with your big guy, your big guy, uh, right? And he spends the next... 15 years of his life sucking up to this guy and the guy retires and gives a shit about him anymore. He'll be dead in three years from a heart attack. And now this guy's worked up the ladder and then, you know, it perpetuates itself, doesn't it? Right? It keeps it going. You know what I mean, man? That's why it keeps going. It's the, the yearning of the 21-year-old. What do I want? Thing is, most 20 year olds don't fucking have a clue. They don't know what they want. They want to play computer games. <laughs> they want to do the things that they've been told constantly they're not allowed to do. You know, oh, you can do what you like when you're an adult, but when you're living in my house, you live out of my rules, right? So, you know, finally they've put up with all that and then they've got some shitty job and they managed to house share with someone and what they want to do is what they haven't been able to do they want to do what they want to do now they're starting to learn whereas they could have started to learn at the age of 12 they've been given a bit of freedom a bit of yeah you try that yeah try that see how that works for you you know some parents do they don't all like that so we have to learn for ourselves and the most ideal time to do it is when that interest is sparked. Let's check it out, see what this is like. Yeah. And then they could go to a job interview at 21 and they could see it for what it is and think, I do not want to slug my, the best the best hours of my day, most of the days of the year, <laughs> even the summer hot days, and the best years of your life, slogging it out for some bloke. Doing what, you know, and that's the other point, doing what, you know, selling paint or... What it, whatever it is, what do businesses do, you know, they're all... They all have a purpose, certainly do. And you can't just generalise. But it's interesting that anything that's man-made, you know, isn't going to last forever. <laughs> <coughs> I went off track. Alright. Another problem with the initial statement is that it isn't true. Success in the rat race world does not necessarily bring happiness. So yeah, so this big fat 50 year old guy, he's got a big guy, you know. Inside, he's not happy. He's having nightmares. His wife hates him. His kids hate him. He's not happy. But he likes getting to work, sit in his big office, that that gives him a good feeling, you know, I've worked hard for this, I've got this I've got this office I can sit in 
and it's important because you know I've got a secretary outside and she works for me you know and I'm going to interview this young chap in a minute you know and he's going to make out that he's so happy oh, yeah this is the good life you want to live like me man <laughs> you know and the, the 20 year old starts believing it and that makes him feel good he's like yeah yeah this is the best life <laughs> And it's not, he's not happy. Because, wait, well, he doesn't think about it, but if he did think about it, he'd think, what have I spent my life doing? Fucking the same thing every day. I've got to admit, my own life is becoming a little bit samey at the moment. But then I think we're we're on the crest of a very important time. So I'd certainly give it another couple of months before I think about any um, drastic changes, unless they're forced upon me. Which could happen. Anything could happen. Yeah. Um, no, I think I'll stop it there. No, I won't. I'll sum up. So, there's a problem in the world. And, uh, yeah, I did sort of hint that. It wasn't just a general thing, you know. I've got my, my own son, he's been saying some of the craziest things. And he's just saying them, right? But he kind of believes it is in this... You know the drill music stuff and there's this rapper who's claiming that he's beating up cops and he's on the run and my son is sort of imitating it a bit, you know. Um, he's, he's in a bit of a fantasy world. I thought, I, you know, might um, uh, encourage, encourage him to... Uh, go into his fantasy world and continue it. But fantasy, right, in imagination. Because imagination um, is interesting. If you if you try and force your imagination, it doesn't really work. Jittery, the things fall off, you know. But when you just go with the flow, and your little imagination. Okay, so if that's how you think reality is, you want to be some sort of guy with a sword who goes and slashes all his enemies and stuff. If that's what you want to imagine, imagine that, okay? You know, so then what's going to happen? Like, okay, you're going to get to a point where you've vanquished all your enemies, right? And, right? and what are you going to do then, you know? Oh, maybe you get a girl and a place to live and, okay, and then what? Oh, maybe then more enemies come. Oh, okay, then you vanquish them. You do, do you know what I mean? Just... If this is a serious imagination for you, if this, if this, if you think this could possibly be reality, then then you should continue on and see where you think it leads. Yeah, I can do that. But the world, yeah, the world isn't in trouble. I mean, it is like the world as it was. This. Everybody go to work and work for a business and make things and ship them all around the world and people buy them and sell them and, you know, that's not, that's not what life's about. Life's, life's about um, discovering yourself, like, you know, these human bodies are capable of so much more than we know, why should we... Just spend all our time with our hands and doing this and maybe a little bit of thinking up here and a little bit of writing, you know. So much more that could be done, that could be learnt about, could be understood. And, and then, you know, if we weren't all sort of greedy, trying to succeed, basically, 
not fail, you know, let other people fail and I'll succeed, thanks. You know, that's not loving, is it? So we're not making more love, we're not loving people and therefore love begets love, right? We're not doing that if we're doing the other thing. So then the other thing is sending us down. And that's why nature is reflecting back to us uh, the wrongness of this and our kids are reflecting back the wrongness of this and the worse we allow it to get the worse all this reflection will be and um, ultimately a light bulb will go on and um, the majority of the people will get it okay you know I've made a lot of videos and they don't get enough views if you've um, decided to listen to this one, you've made it to the end. Check out my introductory video, that's got a link to my previous channel. Um, I think it's good stuff. Anyway, okay.